Nature is wild, ruthless and brutal. It hosts parasites that infest and fester in their host, cowbirds that lay their eggs in other birds' nests. But within all this savagery, we can also see behaviors that are aren't as bad, such as tree frogs that use plants as protection, or vultures that scavenge on the remains of food left behind hyenas. But we also have some behaviors that are straight up wholesome, like ox peckers that eat parasites off of rhinos' backs, or bees that collect nectars from flowers. These long-term interactions between different species are called symbiotic relationships, and there are three main kinds. Parasitism, where one benefits and the other one is harmed, commensalism, where one benefit and the other is unaffected, and finally mutualism, where both species benefit. Now I don't know about you, but seeing animals acting like jerks to each other is not that interesting. After all, almost all the interactions in nature are like that. If you would like to see some examples of parasitic interactions, you should check out this video where I explored interactions between viruses and bacteria. But in this video, we'll mostly focus on the more unintuitive and therefore more interesting kinds of symbiotic relationships, the commensal and mutualistic ones through a series of simulations. In a commensal relationship, one species is supposed to benefit while the other one is unaffected. To simulate this, we'll have a regular bacteria that eats the food around, but afterwards produce a byproduct that it can't use as food. We'll also have another bacteria that can't eat the regular food, but instead can only eat the byproduct produced by the first bacteria. Before we start the simulation, if this is what the population graph of the first bacteria looks like, how do you think the other one will look like? As the first bacteria grows, more byproduct will be produced, which means more food for the second bacteria. So I imagine their population graphs will look something like this, where the byproduct eater lags behind the byproduct producer. So to test this, I ran the simulation 3 times for around 20 minutes each, and let's see how the population graphs turned out. We can definitely see the peaks and dips of the first bacteria, which were followed closely afterwards by the second one. We can also see this play out in the simulation, where after the regular bacteria clear out a lawn of food, they leave behind a lawn of byproducts behind them, which creates an opportunity for the second bacteria to come in afterwards and grow. Now, in order to demonstrate mutualism, I added a slight twist to the first simulation. We still have the byproduct producers and eaters, but now the eaters are much bigger and they protect their food source. Protect from what, you might ask? From the invasive bacteria, which are there to only eat the byproduct producers. I didn't realize until I started writing my script, but now this simulation demonstrates mutualism and parasitism at the same time. There's a parasitic relationship between the invasive bacteria and the byproduct producers, where the invasive ones benefit from eating them to their detriment. On the other hand, the byproduct eaters need the byproduct producers to survive, and they in turn protect them from the invasive bacteria, so they have a mutualistic relationship. We must appreciate that in order for this simulation to work, there has to be a clear balance between all three species of bacteria. If we don't have any invasive bacteria, we basically have a replica of the first simulation. On the other hand, if we only have the byproduct eaters and the invasive bacteria, there is no food for either one to eat. So this population ends rather quickly. And finally, if we only had the byproduct producers and the invasive bacteria, there is no protection for the producers, so they get hunted to extinction, and the invasive bacteria starve to death right afterwards. It took some tries, but I finally did achieve long-term survival of all species of bacteria together. If we examine their population graph, we can see the multiple population dynamics play out in real time. Let's first focus on the parasitic relationship between the byproduct producers and the invasive bacteria. Their populations are mirror opposites of each other, whereas one goes up, the other one goes down. On the other hand, if we look at the populations of the byproduct producers and the byproduct eaters, we can see that their peaks and troughs match, since they're in a mutualistic, symbiotic relationship with each other. I hope you liked this video. If you enjoy these kind of scientific explorations, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.